Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our continuation of section 5.7 on enthalpies of formation. So we left off talking about the standard enthalpy of change. And the standard enthalpy of change denoted by delta H naught of a reaction is defined as the enthalpy change when all reactants and products are at their standard states. This reminder, standard states means that you're at a pressure of one atmosphere, you're at room temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius, also 298 Kelvin, and at room temperature, you're at the state of matter that your particular element is at, at room temperature. Now, your standard enthalpy of formation, bringing together um, enthalpies of formation and your standard enthalpy changes together, <clears throat> denoted by delta H naught sub F, of a compound is the change in enthalpy for the reaction that forms one mole of that particular compound from its elements with all substances in their standard states. For example, if I have two moles of carbon in the form of graphite, this is the elemental most, I guess, standard state of carbon. There are other forms like diamond would also be a um, state of carbon in elemental form, but not the standard state. The standard state is graphite. So two moles of graphite react with three moles of hydrogen gas along with one half mole of oxygen gas to produce one mole of ethanol, C2H3OH. The st standard enthalpy of formation is equal to negative 277.7 kilojoules. So here I have elements coming together to form a compound. And how much? One mole of a compound. This is a definition of a standard enthalpy of formation, or an example. Since we're referring to the formation of one mole of my compound, the delta H sub F naught is considered to be in units of kilojoules per mole, just like it has been in the past, or as far as our delta H values. Now, let's do an example. An example of what? Why we actually use this and when we actually use this. So we use enthalpies of formation to calculate enthalpies of the reaction. So we can use Hess's law and the enthalpy of formation, the standard enthalpy of formation, values, and we get these values from Appendix C, which is in um, your book on page 1959, to calculate the standard enthalpy change for any reaction for which we know our delta H sub F naught values for all reactants and products. For example, I have the combustion of propane gas here. So if you're going to go barbecue something on your gas grill, this is what's going down. So you have propane gas here, one mole of it, reacting with five moles of oxygen gas, producing three moles of carbon dioxide, and four moles of water vapor. Now the question is, what is the standard change in enthalpy of this reaction? To get this, we have to use, or we can use, the formation, or the change in enthalpies of formation for the compounds that are here. So how is that formed? What's the enthalpy change when this is formed? What's the enthalpy change when this is formed? What's the enthalpy change when carbon dioxide is formed? What is the enthalpy change when water is formed? And those formation equations are down here. So propane is formed by carbon, hydrogen forms propane. That has an enthalpy, a standard enthalpy of formation associated with it. Same with Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is formed from carbon plus oxygen gas goes to carbon dioxide. That has its own standard formation of enthalpy change. And here, we have hydrogen gas going together with oxygen gas to produce water. This has its own associated <clears throat> enthalpy change, standard enthalpy change of formation. There. Now we use this given information to come up with our delta H of reaction at standard states, of course. Now, just like we did with Hess's law, we're going to use it here again. We have to make sure that our equation here is reflected from our three separate reactions down here. So first and foremost, I can think of, uh, well, I see three equations, but I see four different 
um, substances here. O2 is not a compound. Thus, it is not formed. O2 can be used to form something else that is a compound, but itself is not being formed, so its enthalpy change of formation is zero kilojoules. So we don't, in fact, we don't have to factor it in to the overall delta H of reaction. So now, we're interested in how propane reacts to form our, react, our products here. This is a formation equation. So this is actually the opposite of what we want. We want to flip this around to get this. C3H8 decomposes into three moles of car carbon and four moles of hydrogen gas. When we flip that, our reaction is now endothermic, and we write the number as a positive 103.85 kilojoules. Now, we want to verify that we have oxygen gas in our reactants for our um, other side here. And we should, because it's a formation reaction. We should have our elemental components here and our compounds over here. So oxygen has an elemental component. It's here and here. That's great. Now on this side, we have carbon dioxide and water. We want carbon dioxide and water on this side of the equation as well, and we do, carbon dioxide and water. Now, to fix a few things, we have three moles of carbon dioxide here, but we only have one here. These have to reflect one another. So we do that by changing this chemical equation here. We add the coefficient of three to all so that these can match up. Because this number here reflects only the enthalpy change of one mole of carbon dioxide being produced. So if we put a three here, it will reflect the three that we need up here. So now you multiply this times three, because as an extensive property, enthalpy will depend on the amount of carbon dioxide that we have as well. Now, our carbon dioxide, we have three moles here, three moles there. Those match both in the product side. That's great. Now we have four moles of water here. Down here, we only have two moles. So we must change that. If we change this, we must change the entire stoichiometric relationship. So we have 4H2 to 2O2 to 4H2O. I just multiplied everything times 2, all my existing coefficients that were already there from the original balanced chemical equation. I multiplied all those times 2, so I must do the same thing with my enthalpy of formation at standard state, because again, enthalpy is, this, <clears throat> is an extensive property. Alrighty, and that's reflected over here now. Here's my new chemical equation, here's my corresponding enthalpy for that chemical equation. All I do is multiply this times 3, and I get this number here, negative 1180.5. Same thing here, multiply this times, sorry, it should be a 4 here, not a 2. It be 4, because I have 4 moles of water. So 4 moles of water, negative 285.8 times 4 gives me 1143.2 because we're talking about four moles of water so we need four times the enthalpy because that was the original enthalpy of just this is the enthalpy of sorry the change in enthalpy of one mole is here this all represented one mole since I have four moles I multiply this times four all right so I have my Delta H1 of my first reaction, delta H2 of my second reaction, delta H3 of my third reaction. Now, I want this to be my final reaction. So, I'll see what, to see what cancels out according to Hess's law. So, C3H8, that's great. We need that on our reactant side. We also need O2 on our reactant side, here and here. What we don't need on our reactive side are our moles of hydrogen gas and moles of solid carbon. So the three moles of solid carbon on this side and the three moles of solid carbon on that side cancel. 
as well as the four moles of H2 here and the four moles of H2 here cancel, leaving us with only one mole of C3H8, which is what we want, and three moles of O2 plus two moles of O2 give me five moles of O2, which is what we want. So we're on the right track. In our product side, we have three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. Those are also what we want in our product side. So now we are ready to add up all of our individual enthalpies of formation for the reaction to get our overall delta H naught of the reaction. Now here, when we do that, so we get delta H naught of the reaction is equal to delta H1, delta H2, and delta H3 all added together. When we do that, we get negative 2,220 kilojoules. Now, a simpler way of doing this is through this equation. It's the same exact thing, but we can do it in a very more, a lot more concise manner or way. The delta H naught of the reaction is equal to the sum, this little big E here is a, the sum of the number of moles of the changes in enthalpy of formation at standard states of your products, minus the sum of the number of moles times the change in enthalpy of formation at standard states of your reactants. So take note of this. Next class, we'll work with this equation and learn how to use it properly and get the same exact answers as we got up here. Thanks, gentlemen.